Are you looking to do deals and master flipping houses? Welcome to the Do Deals Show with our host, Mr. Tim Mott. As a successful investor and mentor to many real estate investors, Tim's students consistently run six and seven figure investing businesses. Each week, you'll hear from top real estate investors who share the best strategies, systems, and secrets that you can use to be more successful. Tim and his guests will pull back the curtain for you to learn their exact tactics, tricks, and tools that are working best right now in today's real estate market. Now, let's welcome Mr. Tim Mai. Now, I know that you know you have done a lot of different types of deals, uh, everything from new development into like major renovation, bulk buys, wholesaling. You know, all, all different types of deals. And what I like a lot about what you uh, share with me is that when, when, a, when, when, when you're working with a, a real estate investor client, um, you know, you, you always start out by asking them, well, what are your goals? What are you trying to achieve? And then recommending them to the, the strategies accordingly to help them achieve their goal. Could you go into that, expand into that uh, and why that's important? Well, it's absolutely critical um, because if you uh, don't love what you're doing, okay, you're not going to get it done. Um, you're just not. Um, uh, every day in my life with the two niche businesses that uh, I am involved with, um, I love both of them. Love both of them. But within that, but, but with that, um, I have things to do every day, maybe not a lot of the day, but there's things that I have to do that I don't prefer doing. And uh, just do I outsource those tasks? Some of them. I just outsourced a task two days ago because I had a, uh, I had a list of people that uh, were registered for that registered for an event that I held. Um, and so all these, this list was a manual list of names, addresses, and telephone numbers. And I needed, needed it typed up and put on an Excel spreadsheet so I could email all those people for the next event. Very a mechanical task. And that was something that I knew that I just needed to outsource, contacted a friend. She did it for me. And um, uh, that project got done in one day. Uh, but there are other things uh, that I do that are not necessarily that much fun at the time, but they're critical in terms of, of getting them done. So, so um, if I didn't love the end result that I was working on, I wouldn't do them. So when I talk to people about their goals, most frequently the response is, well, I want to make uh, $200,000 this year. I said, okay, um, how, how much, what's the most amount of money that you've ever made? Uh, $40,000, okay. Well, we have a problem because they don't know what's involved in going from 40,000 to 200,000. Uh, and, and they're focused on the money I said, well, you know, why that number? Well, I want to buy a new house. I want to buy a new car. I want to get these things. Okay. So we're talking about why do you want those things? Okay. So we have to keep going deeper, deeper and deeper. Okay. So once I understand why they want the money that there's, is their goal, then I can, then I can begin to help them understand, uh, well, do you really like this whole idea of working for yourself uh, building teams, networks uh, for partners, teams, uh, par partners meaning deal partners. I don't necessarily, right out of the box, uh, advocate. In fact, I discourage people taking on what I call a business partner. Uh, uh, I, I have had business partners. I have one now. Uh, it can work out very, very well. And other partners um, haven't worked out so well. So it just depends, okay? So, uh, but deal partners, that's a different situation. So if, if, let's look at a deal. Well, a deal partner can be a contractor who's doing the work. They can, 
they can partner with you in the profits of the deal. Um, you can have a deal partner in the uh, private money that comes in for the cash that you need for a deal. That can be a deal partner. They're going to you're gonna, they're going to share in the agreed upon profits of the deal. They may also get an agreed upon uh, interest rate. Uh, so it can be a blend of interest and profits. Those are all possibilities. Okay, um, the thing that people need to understand with respect to real estate and lend lenders, lenders will always take a first position. They always want the first secured position in the deal. They're not going to lend you money unless they have that position. Okay, so but there are other lenders or private money lenders that will partner with you on a deal and take a second position. Okay, but a first position primary lender typically takes the first first position in the deal. So I want people to understand that in business and particularly real estate investment business, that this is a business of networking. Uh, that means you talk to people. That means you pick up the phone and talk to people. That means you respond to questions. That means you're prepared for what you want to do. So, you know, for someone just starting out, the question always is, well, I don't have any money. I don't have any credit. OK, well, I say, well, you don't need that. And then then you get the people who says, I don't believe you. I said, well, I got to tell you, believe me, because I've done it. OK, and I've done it more than once. OK, so how is it that I'm successful with no money or no credit doing deals? Well, I'm successful because I find I establish the parameters for the financial success of the deal. So, for example, if if Tim, if you're the lender, and I say, Tim, what's your criteria for lending? And you say, Well, um, we're going to lend up to seventy uh, percent maximum on the after repair value. Okay. Well, now I know your criteria. Okay. So, and that's not unusual, by the way. That number I just cited. Okay. So, so, so. But what's your basis for after repair value? How are you going to come to a lender or anybody and say, here's a deal. Here's my after repair value of that deal. OK, I can tell you with all my experience, when I've landed on an after repair value projection, I've been wrong 100 percent of the time, 100 percent of the time I've been wrong. OK, and some by a wide margin. OK. Uh, and uh, what other number uh, have that's really important on a deal? Because people just, I can buy this house for $70,000. I can put $40,000 into it. Now I'm into it with $110,000. I say, no, you're not. It's more than that. When you buy something for $70,000, there's closing costs that you pay on the front end. It's not as much as this closing cost on the, on the back end. But there's closing costs front and back. There's 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 holding costs. What's holding costs? Well, the interest on the money, the interest on the money, the maintenance on the house, utility bills on the house, okay, the taxes on the house. Okay, people forget all this stuff. They they just say they just say, well, I'm going to buy the house for seventy. It's going to cost me thirty thousand to renovate it because that's what the contractor says. All of a sudden, contractor is in the house. Because you've got a good estimate, reputable contractor, no problem. Contractor goes in the house and they're starting to uh, redo um, uh, the master bathroom. They tear things out. And what happens? They find termites. Oh. Now, the, you couldn't see it. Okay? Let's, you couldn't see it. Or the most notable example was uh, I did a deal on a house not, not too far from my market here in uh, Largo, Florida, which is near Clearwater, Florida. And uh, I'll never forget it. We, we knew that the house needed a new roof. We knew that there was leakage around the chimney in the house. Okay, We knew that. We had that in our estimate. What we didn't know was once we removed the roof and once we removed some of the siding or whatever uh, for, to repair the chimney, the damage was far more extensive than we could see. Right. And it caused it caused an eight thousand dollar variance. Right. So. So so Steve, like, you know, 
I think that coming from a business background like you, you you yeah you look at even though even even if you were to start you know the real estate investing business brand new, you know you're looking at long term. You're looking at okay, what are my goals? What you know what what are my strengths? You know, run it like a business. What if someone comes to you and says, Steve? I just I just want to get started quickly, do a deal, make some money, and see if I even like this business. You know, before I do any other kind of business plan and any other kind of you know long term thinking. Um, you know, how would you how would you advise someone? Or, uh, you know, if if they came to you with with that. Okay, so first of all, I would want to really understand if they were interested in being active or passive. Uh, if, they, if they want to be active, um, and let's say that they have no money, um, very little money, uh, and they have bad credit, okay? So let's, let's, let's use that profile, okay? So, so the first thing that I'm going to advise them to do is I'm going to have them start attending uh, some of the meetings that I'm familiar with in my market. I want them to start meeting some people and just paying attention to what people are doing. Okay. The next thing, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend them to connect with um, several people that I know who are very experienced, who are very good. But let's 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 even let's let's take a step back. Let's assume that um, you let's say they're in another market where you don't have resources in another market. But but you you know uh, so yeah let's take the advice from that perspective so, so that way if someone getting start you know let's say if someone's you know g getting started in this business and they're in New Mexico somewhere right where you don't have any connections um, so so let's let's yeah take it from that perspective. Okay, so the first thing you do in any market is you need to understand the market. Okay, and so I'll give you an example. Um, because you can do this with any market. I did it with Tampa Bay just recently. I just said, what, what's really happening in Tampa Bay? Well, the well, well, the generalization of Tampa Bay is is that we have three major counties in Tampa Bay. We have the Hillsborough County, where, where's, where the county with the airport. We have Pinellas County, which is board of the beaches. And we have uh, P Pasco County, which is north of both those two counties. And so roughly speaking, there's about 9,000 houses uh, for sale in the market. That's the public record. That's from the MLS records, maybe 10,000. And that number has not changed a great deal in one year, but the prices have changed. So the cost per square foot of houses sold has increased depending on what source you're looking at anywhere from seven to 13% in one year. So, so I start looking at that and I want people to understand what's happening with their market what, what just get a feel for what's happening with their market go to google just just google the question you know tampa bay real estate data or houston real estate data um uh and trends uh, uh i want them to google uh their real estate investment association club in their market if they have one okay if they have one uh, that's going to be a good source for beginning to develop contacts, okay, uh, both contractors, wholesalers, and uh, potential uh, lenders and re and realtors. So that's going to be a that's going to be a really good step. So you have to develop contacts. One way or another, you have to develop contacts. So Google um, who are the real estate investors in your market because maybe there's not a real estate investment association club in your market. Most every large city that I'm aware of has them, has more than one. Uh, but smaller towns may or may not, or maybe you have to drive a little, little ways to get to get to them. So you have to begin developing your contact base, and then you have to decide what you're going to focus on. Well, if you're brand new, you don't know what to focus on. Okay, you don't. Okay, so so many people would say, well, I'm going to focus on wholesaling. Okay, how are you going to find those deals to wholesale? How, how, how are you going to know what to do? Okay. Well, you you really need guidance, and the best guidance, okay, is not from books and tapes and seminars. It's not. 
The best guidance is to work directly with someone who's experienced doing deals and who's, how, how do you know that they're experienced? If there's someone like me, I'm not ashamed to tell people of my failures. I'm not. Because if you don't have any failures, you're not doing anything. Okay. Or you're not doing enough. Yeah, you're not. Okay. So people that are not afraid to admit their failures, okay, then those are people that I want to pay attention to. Now, I'm not just talking about connecting with somebody who's just failing, but somebody who's successful but has in their history uh, transactions that didn't work. Because I've learned as much from, I've actually learned more from my failures than I have from my successes. Why did that fail? Why did that fail? What did I miss? What do I not want to repeat? Okay, so very, very valuable. So you want to connect with somebody like that who will guide you and teach you and mentor you. And I'm not talking about somebody, because I was working for an organization and I know of organizations that cost, that charges huge amounts of money for coaching and mentoring. I don't recommend it. I recommend finding that expert or experts in your local market who are nuts and bolts people, who are boots on the ground people, who are doing deals, who know the transactions in and out, know how to do contracts, know how to find deals, and you and you connect with them. Now, you may not have any money to pay them. So what do you do? Well, you, you find the people who will, you demonstrate that you're going to do a lot of work for them in exchange for the training and in exchange for maybe a little bit of payment on the back end if they make money, if I make money on a deal. It's all negotiation. But you have to convince them that you're for real, that you are bringing value to the table by your sweat equity, and you're very serious about following their direction. Okay? The last thing that you want to do is come into a relationship like that and then start arguing with them that you know that you don't think they know what they're doing. Okay? That's not a good way to establish credibility. Okay? So, no, that doesn't mean you can't speak. It does not mean you can't ask questions. And sometimes they could be telling you something that you say, well, you know, I'm not sure that, how does this make sense? Asking that question is a good question. How does this make sense? Then they either explain it or they'll say, well, you know what? That's a good question. I'm, I'm wondering if it does make sense now. You know, they may say that because they hadn't thought it through. Your questions can help them think it through. So it's not, it's not about never saying anything or disagreeing. No, it's not about that at all. It's about saying, could you tell me how this makes sense? Because I don't understand. That's a great, that's a great question. Okay. okay. So, so now, once you start having, now that you're starting to do something, you're starting to connect with people, you're starting to maybe help somebody. Maybe you've done a deal for mentoring and coaching on doing actual deals. Because what are you going to get coached on? Well, you could get coached on buy, fix, and flips. That's different than being coached on wholesaling. You know, how do wholesalers find deals? Okay. A lot of that is from direct mail. A lot of it's from direct mail. Um, well, so, so, so real quick, uh, right. Steve. Um, so, you know, what are some, because we're going to be wrapping up our call here pretty soon here. What are some of the, do you, have, you know, before we started recording, you mentioned about some resources that you use to learn about a market. Uh, yeah. What are some of the resources that, that, you know, you recommend for people to, to use in, you know, in, in, in learning this business and uh, in analyzing their markets um, and, and such? Okay, so you get different points of view on this. My point of view is very simple. Okay, when you go to uh, Google and ask the question, you know, T Tampa Bay real estate data and trends, you're going to get a number of different sources. Okay, and f one source was uh, the data from Trulia, which is a which is an on which is a which is a big system. Uh, another source is Zillow, uh, but my po and, and other sources can be uh, big uh, realtor organizations like Keller Williams uh, or somebody like that. Um, and they get, they're going to have data. And my, 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 my point is on that. That's interesting. Uh, kind of know what's going on in the retail market, but it's not going to help you. It's not going to help you as a real estate investor because you're going to want to find the deals where you can make um, uh, real estate investment profits. And the data that you're looking at online, the data that's published, is typically retail data. So you're going to know what's happening with pricing. You're going to know what happens with um uh, foreclosures being sold by the banks, the REOs, bank-owned properties, but that's not going to help you. 
Okay. What you need to do is you need to f figure out how you're going to find your deals. And so you need to connect with people to do that. Okay, great. Awesome. All right. Um, well, Steve, if you know, the listeners want to um, reach out to you, connect with you, um, learn from you, do deals with you, where would you like to send them? Well, certainly the easiest way is just go, going to my main website, which is my name, stevepollitt.com. Okay. And when you go there, you're going to see a couple articles that represent my newest model, which is Time to Be Great LLC. And take a look at those articles those articles because it kind of lays out a very unique and we call it disruptive technology in the marketplace. Uh, what's disruptive technology? Uber's disrupt disruptive. Airbnb is disruptive. Amazon is disruptive. OK, so what, why is time to be great LLC disruptive? Because we're, we're we are matching uh, assets of high value with um, with solutions for people that have those assets. So, for example, uh, people often need some to create some liquidity, but they have assets. Um, well, they become a member of our firm and we help them solve that problem and we all benefit. So it's a very, very interesting model in a very short period of time. We have under control nearly $3 million worth of pro properties and, and assets. And I think within the next six months, that number is going to be closer to 50 to $100 million. And, we're, and, we're, um, and what are we doing? We're, 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 getting, we're getting capital where it's needed. Um, we are building assets where there's an opportunity to build assets and we're solving problems without relying on the banks or attorneys. Right, that's awesome. So is the website why it's time to be great LLC.com? No, it's just, just, my, just stevepollett.com. That's where you'll find a couple articles. We don't have much published on this. It's, it's, we don't talk a lot about it in the public forums we're talking about with people that we network with. Gotcha, here. gotcha, awesome. Well, Steve, thank you so much for do, doing this interview with me. I appreciate you greatly, great insight. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's always great to hear it from a, a business coach, a, a, you know, a businessman perspective uh, than you know, a typical interview is from an investor who's just go out there and do some stuff, <laughs> make things happen. Yeah, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> Because you're going to get lost and you're going to get, yeah, you're going to waste a lot of time. Awesome. All right, Steve. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've gotten value out of this, if you like this, make sure you give us feedback, rate us, share this with your friends, uh, and um, you know, connect with Steve. And with that, happy investing, and we'll see you on the next interview. All right. Bye, everyone. And that's our show for today. If you have any questions or would like to get further training from Tim Mai, please visit our website at www.dodeals.com slash Tim.